You are listening to the Atlanta Sports Podcast, the only podcast covering all of your teams. Bringing you the best sports news from the state of Georgia, from the professional ranks to the high school levels, we have it all. Now, we are talking about your Atlanta Falcons, right here on the Atlanta Sports Podcasts. Hey everybody, welcome back to the show, the Atlanta Sports Podcast. My name is Frankie Maloof. And Luke could not be with us today, so I am running solo. But today we're going to talk about the Atlanta Falcons. And man, did they surprise me with that impressive win over the Los Angeles Rams on Sunday. They beat them 42-14, to which is, doesn't happen a lot in the NFL. You see that sometimes in college. You'll see one team beat up on another. In the NFL, that doesn't happen so often. A strong start. They did start a very strong. That dropped kickoff at the beginning. The Falcons jumped on it, and then one play later they were up. 7 to nothing, 10 seconds into the game. Defensively, they played awesome. Vic Beasley, he's now tied with Vaughn Miller, who's a big name. You might remember he plays for the Denver Broncos. He just signed that major contract deal with them over the offseason. He's now tied with him for the league leader in sacks. He had three sacks this week, including his strip sack and the fumble that was recovered in the end zone. He's at 13 and a half sacks on the year right now. Now, while we're talking about the sacks, we're going to talk about as a team... The Atlanta Falcons have 28 sacks so far this season. Now, last year, they finished 32nd in the league, 32nd out of 32. So they were last in the league with sacks, and they only had 19 as a team last year. Now, Vaughn Miller, I think, finished with 17 or 18 by himself last year, and Vic Beasley's on track to do that himself this year as well. But as a team, much better defensively getting the pass rush going and eventually getting the quarterback to come down. Much better job this year. That pass rush is finally starting to take shape. They've been rebuilding and rebuilding it up there in the front office in Flowery Branch, but they have finally started to see some improvement, and hopefully we can only build on that this year and next year and for the years to come. Also, I want to talk about the turnover ratio. The Falcons forced five turnovers yesterday. They were fourth in the turnover ratio in the league now. They're plus eight which is much better last year. They were 27th. They were negative 7. And part of that was because they didn't do a good job forcing turnovers defensively last year. And this year they are much better with that. Like I said, forcing 5 yesterday versus the Rams. So offensively, it was a great to see them play well without Julio Jones, who does have turf toe, which is why he was unable to play on Sunday. Dan Quinn didn't decide to hold him out. Now I'm hoping that he does end up playing next week, and I think he has a good chance to. But we're going to run through some statistics. Matt Ryan, 18 for 28, 237 passing yards. He's over 200 yards yet again, extending that record of most consecutive games over 200 yards passing. He had three touchdowns and no interceptions, which is huge for him. No interceptions. You know, he's been ripped on, I guess you could say, by some fans recently and in the years, past few years, because he throws a lot of interceptions, especially in the red zone. This year, he's done a much better job taking care of the ball, and it really showed this time as he was 3-0 to zero for that touchdown-to-interception ratio. And also, Matt Schaub got into the game a little bit. He was 0-2. He didn't complete a pass, but it's nice to see to know that your backup quarterback can get in the game at some point in the NFL. And then rushing, Tevin Coleman was a leading rusher, 8 carries for 36 yards. You know, for a 42-point 42 42 game, it's surprising to see the offense not have as many yards, I guess you could say. But they didn't need to. The defense really stepped up in this game. The offense could have, the offense did good by themselves, but the defense is what really, I think, won the game here. Devontae Freeman also six carries for six yards and no touchdowns. So receiving, Gabriel had that long reception, the 64 yard pass from Matt Ryan. He had three receptions for 82 total yards and the touchdown. Tevin Coleman also had a pretty good day. He was two catches for 19 yards, and I like the way they've been using him. As a pass-catching receiver, that's a great way to use him, and I think he's done a great job in that this year. Toy Lolo also added one catch for 19 yards, and then Justin Hardy had a touchdown on two catches for nine yards. Courtney Upshaw, Paul Warlow, and Vic Beasley all recovered fumbles. Those were three of the five turnovers the St. Excuse me, not St. Louis, the Los Angeles Rams had. Then also, Keanu Neal was a leading tackler. He had eight total tackles, six by himself. And then I mentioned the Vic Beasley, the three sacks. Then Deion Jones and Ricardo Allen each added a pick. So the three fumble recoveries and those two interceptions, they added up to the five turnovers 
Kicking, Matt Bryant did not attempt a single field goal, but he was a perfect 6 for 6 on extra points. Matt Bosher, 8 punts, which, like I said, the offense didn't have as good a day as you would have thought from just from looking at the score. He did punt 8 times with a 51.9 average. He had 2 punts inside the 20, and he did have a long of a 66-yard punt, which is always nice. So, you know, defensively, the Atlanta Falcons, they held the Los Angeles Rams, they held them to 312 total yards on 67 plays. Now, the Rams had 14 drives. The Falcons only had 13, but that's pretty even. But the turnovers were really, really took over this game. Now, you did have Jared Goff. He's a number one overall pick. He's still a rookie, so he's still learning those two interceptions. You would think that he would learn a little bit better as he learns to read coverages in the NFL and adjust to the speed of the game. But then all the fumbles too, which the Rams, the Rams need to avoid if they're going to keep going. And they did end up firing their, firing their head coach, Jeff Fisher today, earlier today, as he rebound or tried to rebound from this loss. Now, most of the Rams yards came through the air. They had 208 yards passing. Now, a lot of that is because they're behind. But the Falcons secondary, which did take a big hit not too long ago with Desmond Trufant being out for the season and being ruled out, that's something that you got to keep an eye on because the Falcons, if they're getting closer to their potential playoff run, they need to be able to stop the pass because the teams that are going to be in the playoffs that they will play will be able to throw the ball, and that is going to be a reason for concern with the Falcons. And then 140 yards rushing for the Rams. The Falcons only rushed for 66 yards, which is something, I guess, if offensively, there's not too much concern there other than the Julio Jones injury, which you hope to see him rebound from that and get to play this league. But if there was any reason for concern, it might be the rushing game. I honestly don't think that it will be that big of a deal. I think they'll get right back to it. But that's just something you could look at if you're trying to find something in this great win by the team. If you're trying to find something to work on, that could be the area offensively. And then they did lose the time of possession battle, honestly, because the defense scored a lot, too. Uh, 27 minutes to 32 minutes to the Rams. And then the zero turnovers to five turnovers. That was the big thing of the day. I've been telling it all over and over. Five turnovers by L.A. Atlanta, none. That is why this game was 42-14. to 14. That's why it was blown open like it was. And that's something the Falcons need to be able to do. Their defense isn't going to be the best in the league this year, and it probably will not act like it at some points. But if it can force turnovers, the Falcons are going to be in every single game, no matter who they play. Previewing the next game, the Falcons play. The Falcons play the 49ers, who are 1-12 in at the moment, which is something the Falcons have got to win this one. According to ESPN, I'm looking at it right now. The ESPN predicts the Atlanta Falcons win 87.2% chance to win. Now, I don't put a lot of stock into that, but, you know, knowing that the 49ers are 1-12, in I think the Falcons have got to take care of business here. Now, you'd hope Julio Jones is back, but if for some reason he isn't, you don't really want him to get hurt in this game when you have later games coming up, potentially the playoffs as well. And then after that, they've got two games, one against the Panthers and one against the Saints both of which will be very important to the Falcons as they are tied for first place still with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Both teams are 8-5, and five, and then the Saints and the Panthers are also, both the Saints and the Panthers are 5-8. and eight. Now, no team has been eliminated fully from playoff contention. According to the NFL playoff picture on NFL.com, in the hunt still consists of the Saints and the Panthers. They're both in the hunt still. The Falcons are in first place. They are the four seed in the NFC. They are slotted to play the New York Giants. Now, if this were to hold, both the Falcons and the Buccaneers would make the playoffs, which is good news for the Falcons fans because if they were to, for some reason, lose the tiebreaker later on, they would still be slotted to be, make the playoffs in the sixth seed, which would put them against the Seahawks again. Now, he, here's the NFL tiebreaking procedure. It says, with two clubs to break a tie within a division. It's the head-to-head, best one loss tied percentage in games between the clubs. Now, the Falcons and the Buccaneers split. They're one and one. So that is void. That doesn't count anymore. So then number two is best one loss tied percentage in games played within the division. And as of right now, they're tied with that one too. They're both three and one as far as I know. Now, the third tiebreaker is the best one loss tied percentage in common games. And that's where the Falcons have the edge. That is why the Falcons 
are ahead of the Buccaneers right now, officially. Now, that could change. The Falcons and the Buccaneers both have two games against division opponents, the Panthers and the Saints. I think they each play them once. So, that would be key. If the Falcons have to lose a game, I'd rather them lose to the 49ers now and then beat the Panthers and the Saints. That way they can still lock down that NFC South Division title and hang up another banner. Although this time it won't be in the Georgia Dome, it'll be in Mercedes-Benz Stadium next year. And wouldn't it be nice to start off next the next year in the new stadium with a brand new Super Bowl banner? Now the Falcons, they still have a shot. Now they tried to scare us earlier with that, I guess you could say, mini collapse where they lost a couple of games and they lost their lead in the NFC South and they came back. The Buccaneers had a good win streak. But I think that maybe now they're back. Maybe this was a good wake-up moment for them. Maybe that they, now they've won this game, maybe now they're ready to completely get back on track and go back and try to win the Super Bowl. All right, so thank you again for listening to the Atlanta Sports Podcasts. As always, you can find us on our website, atlantasportspodcast.com. You can follow us on Twitter. We're at ATL Sportscasts. You can reach out to us there on Twitter, or you can contact uh, contact us on the Contact Us tab on our website. And you can also sign up for our newsletter there. That'd be great. You can stay updated on the latest news, all of our latest podcasts and blog posts. And you can also leave us a review on the iTunes store. We'd love to hear from you. Tell us how we're doing. And that also helps us to find more listeners. If you know anybody that likes the Atlanta Falcons or any team in Atlanta for that matter, let them know about us and tell them about the show and we'd love to have them. And we hope to see you next week with another show.